Welcome to the channel. On this channel, we talk everything nursing, medicine, and university related. We also talk about books. Today is a nursing perspective. Um, I had a question from my student to make a video on this topic. So here we are. Today, we are going to talk about what are nursing considerations. Hmm, I wonder what are nursing considerations. <laughs> Well, so basically, nursing considerations are activities that are very, very important in secondary care and primary care. Now, nursing itself involves solving problems. So in nursing, what we do is we solve problems. So we solve the problems of our patients and we do this by finding out what's the needs of our patients so every nursing activity involves the use of critical thinking in class i always say you must employ critical thinking in any analysis that you carry out the quality of your nursing activities should always be good because it should increase your patient's satisfaction and you need to think of patient safety and everything is cost effective in the nhs we always think money now we don't think money on a um face-to-face -face basis but behind the scenes everything has to do with cost and effectiveness so whatever we do must be cost effective so nurses in hospitals they are involved in so many activities from admissions to discharge. So when you go to a &E, you're feeling unwell, you go to a &E, the first person you see is a nurse. When you um, are being discharged from the hospital, the person that discharges you is a nurse. So you see the nurse from admission right through to discharge. Think of nurses as someone who provides 24 hour care for the patient. When you wake up in the morning, if you're in hospital, you see the nurse. At lunchtime, you see the nurse. When you're going to your bed at night, you see the nurse. During the night, the nurse is there. So we have to remember that nursing is a 24 hour job. The nursing process is always utilized and employed when we are admitting patients onto the ward and when we are discharging patients off the ward. I have a video discussing the nursing process and what it means. Please um, go and see that video. I will link it at the end of this video and it's called the nursing process. It should be either above or in the box at the end. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. So patient care includes performing nursing assessments, writing a care plan and developing interventions for patients. So we plan these interventions for patients hoping that they will either be well enough to look after themselves or we will um, refer to the MDT. Think of nurses when we do an assessment, we create an intervention, we into implement the care and then we evaluate the care we implement. And in evaluating the care, it's about analyzing, modifying, and or stopping care if it's not working. So these are all nursing interventions and also nursing considerations. So I'll repeat that. Basically, we assess the patient, we plan care based on assessment, we implement that care, and then we evaluate that care. We evaluate the care by analyzing the care that we're given, the care that we've written in the care plan, and we see if it needs to be modified, if it should be continued, or if it needs to stop because it's not working. So let's move forward. We've decided and we've analyzed that and we strategize that nursing considerations are also nursing interventions. So when you say nursing considerations, you're talking about interventions that the nurses will do based on their assessment and their care plan. So examples of nursing interventions and considerations include discharge planning. Very, very important. When you have a patient on the ward and you are going to discharge them back home or into a nursing home or into any, anywhere you're going to discharge them back to their family, their daughter, their son, then we need discharge planning. We think about things like health promotion and education 
care need to be person centered and um, we as nurses also give a little bit of emotional support because patients are emotional um, at some times when um, they're very, very unwell, when they're being discharged home and they think they might not get a good package to go home with. So i.e. when I say good package, I mean they might have stairs and um, they're concerned that they can't get up the stairs to go to bed at night. We also, you know, look after patients' personal hygiene, their oral care, fluid intake, very, very important fluid intake. Fluid intake output, we don't want our patients to be drinking fluids or getting fluids through IV, but they're not letting the fluid out. So fluid output as well. Um, we also look at the meals that are being provided. Are they nutritious? Is it good for this patient? Does this patient need puree meals? Did you refer to the SALT team, which is a speech and language team who will um, assess the patient for meal planning in terms of do they need um, to go and puree meals? Have they been referred to the dietitian? Have you referred them to the OT to check their environment? Have you referred them to the physio, depending on um, movements and stuff like that, yeah? And basically, we monitor these patients based on their condition. Do think the delivery of nursing care and considerations should always involve your patient. Remember we spoke about person-centered care. So this means that each person, each patient should be seen as an individual. And our nursing midwifery council highlights this as well. So if you go back to the NMC code, the code will highlight that each person is an individual. We coordinate and we integrate nursing care. We provide education and information, um, health promotion. We do that by educating our patients to, to cope with their disease. It might be diabetes. It might be um, that we just give them information because um, they might be suffering from asthma. So we give them information on how to use their pump. And we need to consider the patient. Once again, patient-centered. Does the patient understand what we're doing? Is the patient able to do the things that we're asking them to do? And this need, our considerations, our nursing considerations need to be comprehensive and they're continuous. Because while we are on the ward, we refer the patient back into primary care, back to home, then we pass them on to the community team. So they're in the hands of another nurse. And this can be quite emotional for, to move from hospital into primary care. So we need to support the patient along those way. So emotional comfort and support is very, very important. To, to offer all of the above that I've, I've listed, the nurse should understand the patient's condition. So here we come again to whatever disease process the patient is going through. So whether it's an acute or a long-term condition, the nurse should understand the patient's condition in such a way that they can motivate the patient and actively participate in any nursing acti activity that is um, needed. So you come back to your long-term conditions and your understanding of long-term conditions and also your understanding of how acute presentations can lead into long-term conditions. So I also have a video on long-term conditions. Um, I'll actually link that as well and you can watch that video. So each nursing activity should consider the patient's safety. Very, very important. Patient safety is key. Nurses are responsible for preventing patients from falling, from developing pressure ulcers, from developing urinary tract infections and any sort of infections as well. Um, we provide education, information regarding the procedures and the processes that the patients will be going through. And we always talk to our patients about our nursing interventions beforehand. We also involve the relatives as well. So you're bringing in the um, person-centered care by bringing in the patient's relatives because sometimes patients are discharged to their relatives or they're discharged home and the daughter or the son will go and have an eye or they are with their wife or husband at home who is relatively the same age and needs support. Always remember that in everything you do, effective communication is key. 
if you are a nurse you must be a good communicator there's no nursing without good communication so the key that's the key to patient safety and it's a key to implementing nursing interventions slash nursing considerations i hope that's explain nursing considerations and nursing interventions and what they're about what i can't do is tell you it would be far too long a video to involve different diseases and different diseases process and what the nursing considerations are for those disease process that would be another video so as i say thing to remember communication is key you need to involve the mdt you need to also involve the patient's relatives and the patient themselves so thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe and if you are new here please like share and subscribe if you're oldie but goodie please like and share with your friends and family thank you so much for watching and if you have anything to input please do so in the um in the communication box if you like the video tell me you like it by giving me a thumbs up if you don't like it tell me you don't like it by giving me a thumbs down and um you can always put a comment in the comment section i'm always in the comment section and i always give a like just for commenting thank you so much and have a good day Thank you.